Three, two, one, go. Booyah. Up in the morning with the rising sun. Gonna run, run, run till the run is done. What's going on? Happy Red Friday to all our veteran community out there. I'm here with the former drill instructor, Hiram Figueroa, devil dog extraordinaire, LinkedIn influencer, talking to you today about personal branding and the best feature about social media, the best feature about how to get your name out there, your brand, so therefore you can get the clients, you can get the job, you can promote your profit, your nonprofit, your 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 initiatives. Uh, Hiram, Devil Dog, thank you for joining the Money Smart Show and the Money Smart Guy here on this Friday, because every Friday we talk to veterans. Well, you know what? I, hey, first of all, Matt, thank you, bro. It's been We've been playing uh, social media tag for quite some time. We've been yep. dating each other and, and liking each other's <laughs> posts. So it's like pretty much a mandate through social media. <laughs> <laughs> so I can I really enjoy what's going on. But first of all, man, hey, thank you, bro. As, a, as another Marine, you've been able to show what it is to be very successful. And, and I'm pretty much proud. For myself, as a, as a Marine myself, and not a former Marine, and as a drill instructor, I've learned a lot of skills that have been able to help me survive in today's society. And when we're going back into transition, bro, it's like, let's talk about your ed journey first, and I can be able to piggy bank on what, what, what it takes for that top 5 to 1% of veterans like us to be entrepreneurs or anything else to be successful. Other people in the veteran community can be, find a sense of belonging and, and, and connect to you. Yep. You got the floor, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely. I, I want to show this one picture to everybody here that you did last week for me, which I really appreciate because um, we just we've been connecting a lot on um, on uh, Instagram. But I, I didn't realize um, how large of a following you had on, 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 on LinkedIn. But this is a this is a, an endorsement, a status update profile share that Hiram did for me on LinkedIn. And um, it got a ton of views, um, got, got me, I think, uh, you know, uh, can't, uh, I haven't even been able to count yet how many people are sending me inbound messages, welcoming me to the, the veteran community and, and wanting to know more about what I do, how I do it. So uh, Hiram, how many followers have uh, followed you on LinkedIn right now? What's your total following on, on, on LinkedIn? Well, bro, let's put it this way. I have about 60,000 followers right now. Nice. 60,000 followers. Yeah, so pretty much 60,000 followers with your situation, and, and let's go with your posts, okay? Me yep. endorsing you because we're part of the veteran community. You're yep. currently going at 10,000 views, and people are still going. Wow. So, so, so at 10,000 views, the people are looking at who you are is because we have a connection. So what, the networking aspect of one veteran to another one is say, hey, if Matt says Hiram's good, he's good. Let's welcome him to the family. Same thing. Why would I not take somebody that has a positive magnitude and, and, and success and endorse that so people yeah. can see that, hey, social media is the power of, of one. Yeah. So I've been pretty much blessed on that, but we're still moving on there. So, so how, how, did you, how did you build the 60,000 total followings on LinkedIn? And I, I, I've been on it for a minute, really wasn't proactive about LinkedIn, which I think is the hidden social media uh, right now. And, and they're obviously here to compete with Facebook and Snap and <sighs> But how did you build up to 60,000 people on, on Look, bro, I'm going to be very honest. I'm being very, very blessed. I mean, some of us, that, you know, I suffer from PTSD, which is a mental disease. So I found it as, as, as by default, you know, hey, this is LinkedIn. Let me do something. I was working for UPS. I decided to retire from there. So I had a stint with uh, Homeland Security. Then I got hooked up with uh, the VA. And then while going through transition, I met a lot of veterans in the VA. And they were mentoring me to help me be successful because I had a hard time adjusting to civilian life like anybody else. So what I decided to do was give back. So when I changed my profile from UPS and operations manager to, to the VA, that thing just, you know, I, I started posting things that we learned back in the business about personal growth, business, business ethics, what motivates you, what drives you, Christianity, you know, and, th and, and most of all, veterans that untold stories are the ones that paid the price that, you know, that were killed in action or suicide or they've come back and they're not right. They're missing yeah. arms, legs, they're paraplegic. So I've been posting that. So it went from 1,500 to 29,000 in one year. Wow. So, so going, just, and yeah, I see you're always consistent with it. You're always doing it. Right. So what happens to me is like you, it, I, I have my own business plan in social media. So I found it more refreshing for me 
to understand that, hey, if I'm on a business website and before it became more stricter, it was, you know, you can do whatever you need, but people identify you with what you bring to the table, right? And today's society, as you know, and in business is uh, people are looking to brand themselves. But how are they branding themselves? People buy you based on the emotion. It takes about two to three seconds to look at a profile and say, hey, what stands out? People read my posts every day because I pretty much stay in my lane when it's consistent about veterans, business, entrepreneurship, personal growth, personal development, taking the excuses why, and able to connect with the veteran community. Like in LinkedIn, for pretty much 80% of them are entrepreneurs or business-minded people that are veteran connected. Yeah. So, so I, th I think right there, you know, the, the, the value, the nugget there is that most people won't post every day. They're on social media. They're on, they're on LinkedIn. They're on Facebook. They're on IG, but they just don't post every day. Would that be a nugget? That you, you, that's that's what you do every day to go from fifteen hundred to twenty thousand uh, followers on, on 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 your profile. Yeah, bro. I, I look at it this way. What works for me is I post and move. I don't sit there and chatter. I don't. It's not about me. It's it's pretty much what the veteran community has done for me, and what other veterans are going through through transition that I showed in today's society. And the power of social media is that people don't feel alone. Hey, I have a connection with that. This guy speaks my language based on what he posts. Let me find out what's going on. It goes back to the same relationship we had. You post something, I post something. You like something, I like something. We develop a relationship, we start connecting. Now what happens? It becomes an evolution where we have a conversation. And then what happens? It becomes a, long la a possible long-lasting relationship that people can understand because we're very like-minded in a lot of ways. Even though you bring something to the table, I bring something to the table, but we're connected. How do you so, feel about that? Then? So a lot of the things that uh, – so you endorse, you share a lot of great things. We've been interacting for a minute but I'm also thinking too as well, this is our first time ever interacting live stream, face-to-face, -face, FaceTime. This is the first time, yeah. right? So yeah. for those of you Face watching this, you're, you guys are experiencing something for the very first time. And, and it's, it's, like, it's, like, uh, it's like friends that just are reconnecting because of the like-mindedness uh, of, of, of what we got going on. Because, you know, I always talk about Hiram, you know, you want to find people that want to know more, be more, and have more. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and see, what happens is this. Everybody, this is what happens, even in business. And you see people in Starbucks. They're on their phone. They don't come up for air for nothing. They're just liking. They're reading. They're liking. They're reading. They're liking. They become an avatar to the phone. But here's the thing. Now, we're talking about everything is social media driven, even in business. Why not capitalize this? Uh, people, you, you it's have not your... It's going away. Social yeah, media is not going away. It's going to get more, it's going to get more tech savvy. I'm a baby boomer. I'm pushing 60. So what? So I'm looking at it as how hard can somebody as a baby boomer like myself can be so, so much social media savvy that we can interact with ourselves and you get the Generation Xers, the millennials, they're doing everything. They're relating. They can't really communicate. They text. Let me text you. Let me email you. Let me FaceTime you. Okay, yeah. let's talk real life. Yeah. Now, from a branding perspective, now we're looking at people seeing it live for the first time, like, wow, this could be surreal. This could be everything else. But the bottom line is this, man. We're both like-minded in a line. We're, we're connected to a cloth, but by separate worlds. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's it. I think, I think, by the way, Jerome just said that too as well. Inconsistency will kill your page. And that's why I make it a point every Friday, I wear red, to on, not only to honor our brothers that are deployed, not for veterans, but under the ones that are currently deployed, but also uh, providing value on, fr on Fridays to veterans. Uh, and this is just my way of giving back. That's just my consistency of showing my, my desire to pay it forward in the veteran community on Fridays. On Wednesday, I do a different type of show where I interview people. So, you know, that, that's how, you know, we're building our, our following, building our consistency. Look, I like the way you're building your business because what you've, what you've created, right? What you've created is a, is, a, is a magnitude of people that are just drawn to the energy you bring to the table. People are seeking that, right? And at the same time, they lose themselves because they're seeking validation of what they do, right? So you're validating of who they are. That's the first thing that the byproduct of being branding. You're branding themselves by what you share. The yeah. same thing what we're doing as well. People are, like you're saying, being inconsistent. I do it every day, but, you know, there's times I don't want to do it. But next thing you know, I don't do it for a day. I get, I get inboxes, so what's going on? You're not posting? What's up? <laughs> the audience is waiting for something. 
people. No, they are, man. And, and, and I look at it this way. Entrepreneurship, business, and everything else. People are, are, are taking for granted that we have smartphone technology and social media, but it's not capitalizing on themselves. People are getting sick and tired of being in their position, but they don't understand the viable resources and the connections of being with circle of influence of being like-minded that can, hey, man, I have someone to who I can, can relate to. I don't have to deal with this crap. You yeah, know? So, so, so this is how you get people to come out the woodwork. You just do, you do, you're doing, you. I mean, the, the power, the, 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 the elements you have here in your phone, the fact that we got live <laughs> podcasts, uh, photos, all, all that stuff, the power of media just being in your phone and being able to communicate that message. So, so, so how, you know, lots of times people say, well, what am I? If I want to create a personal brand, what am I? You know, so, so let's talk to the veterans out there. Um, what am I? How, how do I set myself apart from the rest of the veterans? Or how do I even see myself? By the way, do you see a lot of veterans think highly of themselves when leaving the military? Yes. As a matter of fact, there's a major disconnection because as, as we've talked about, you looked at my profile, right? I, I work for the VA right now. I'm a motivational speaker for the veterans and, you know, for po combat PTSD and PTSD, wherever, wherever the case may be, because 80 percent of the veterans have some form of PTSD because they can't relate to certain things when they come to the real world because they've lost their identity and they say they're broken. They can't even talk to the other people like yourselves. It would take five years for them to go to actual transition, to sit down and talk to you and say, hey, Matt, can you help me out? I've been going through a rough time, pretty much, right? Yeah. And you can sit there and look at them and say, I've been there where you've been at, so what took you so long? Yeah, right? hello. So what took you so long? All because pride. And let, me, let me put it to you this way. Pride doesn't pay the bills. What you did back in the military is good, but it doesn't help you become and bring those transition skill sets if you want to be successful in life. People can look at it that way, but if you start speaking alien and veteran talk, people will shun <laughs> away from you. So yeah. you, you tell me, how did you cope with your situation? Yeah, I, I, I had a difficult time, especially trying to get involved in sales. You know, when people said, I'll think about it, I'll get back to you later. I'll, I'll you know... Um, let me ask my wife. Let me ask my husband. I'm, I'm freaking out. Like, you're thinking about what's the thinking about, right? So it's a I, black and white issue. It's a black and white issue for us. Yeah, yeah, right. Very simple. Either you do, you don't, man. Right. And, and if you make the wrong decision, we're gonna make it, We're gonna let you know about it. Right. And so, so you know, for us, look, it, it's like you're in Chicago. I'm in Los Angeles. We're, you know, quite a ways. You have such a, a such a, a profound platform of people bring, coming to you. People actually what? I've checked out your, your uh, uh, Instagram. You had one kid took a bus ride to come to your office. Yeah, you know? hour and a half bus ride. Three different buses to get here. Right. So what does that tell you? It tells you a lot because you're pretty much in a comfortable se setting and people say, this guy can accept me for who I am. This is the same thing I do with the veteran community. This guy accepts me. I have CEOs asking me. Well, I was in the Marine Corps. I was doing that. I said, that's great. So don't tell me thank you for your service because that's pretty much all you're going to do. How can you thank me for how can you thank me by being successful? Can you give me an opportunity? Can you help me? Can you mentor me to be successful? Can you mentor me to understand the language that civilian people don't understand me because I'm so frustrated and broken? Right. Yeah. When you think so. Yeah. I mean, I go ahead. Yeah, so so for for the veterans that's out there. By the way, if you're if you're watching this right now, you're just logging in. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. You listen to the Money Smart Show. I'm your host, Money Smart Guy, United States Marine Corps turned of uh, financial entrepreneur. Joined with me by Hiram Figueroa, uh, uh, LinkedIn profile over sixty thousand people are following him on LinkedIn. We connect because of social media. This is our very first time interacting. Uh, <laughs> live, talking over the phone. Yeah, yeah, that's all good. Yeah. Man, dang. that's what it is. I just said. But, you know, listen, uh, people don't understand how real it gets because they need to get out of their way, right? So you, you're, you're pretty much the smart guy in what you bring to the table. What I do right now, I run two nonprofit organizations. I'm vice president of both of them, right? I'm connected with guys, operators, SEALs, everybody else. I, I talk to them. I've spoken to Marcus Luttrell. I've spoken to David Goggins. I've spoken to quite a few guys. And what they've told me is pretty much they've had their challenges too. You know, there was a guy that, you know, Dakota Myers, he's a medal, of winner, a medal yeah. honor of winner, right? Back over there. 
He even put it on his FaceTime. I'm still going through a change, man, because I'm still broken. Mm. But he's being paid to do the profiles and to speak publicly. But yeah. he's still had, missing that connection. So when he's surrounded by Marines or people in the veterans, he feels more comfortable because he can yeah. be able to express themselves. I mean, have you seen that situation on your end? Dude, I love it. And, and one, of the, one of the communities I'm plugged into all the time here in Chicago is Bunker Labs, which is led by a, a Navy uh, uh, officer named uh, Todd Connor. Uh, and I connect with a lot of veterans through Bunker Labs right in the Chicagoland area uh-huh. to inspire and incubate veterans to become entrepreneurs. And so um, let's talk about something that happened on social media a minute ago that you were very instrumental in getting somebody fired. But uh, uh, Gary, Gary Salcido <laughs> was, a, was a teacher. For the, Bobby, you guys got to, you guys got to, if you haven't shared it already, this is about to get juicy. So make sure you share this video because it's about to go down. You're going to get the juice right now. But, oh, uh, man. Don't Gary go Jerry Spring on me. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, Gary Salcido was that teacher who went on a rant in a classroom because a student was wearing a Marine Corps T-shirt. And he talked about how bad the military was, about how this um, basically was disparaging veterans. Talking about we're low lives, that we had, if we had options, we would have been in the military. We're low level thinkers. And if we would have been smart enough, we would have been to college. So, bro, talk to me, man. You got him fired. Thank you very much. Look, bro, thank you very much. So l- l- let me put it to you this way. Uh, Victor Quinones is a kid that's a senior that's going to El Rancho High School. His dad is uh, uh, a Marine, right? Uh, Vincent. Uh-huh. So he was in the Marine Corps and everything. So this kid's plan to join the Marine Corps. So he's wearing a Marine Corps hoodie. So... Mm-hmm. The story has been going on for a long time because Salcedo, and I can say that now because Homeboy got 86 out there, thanks yeah. to the city of uh, Pico Rivera and, and, and the school district, was targeting him for a long period of time. This was a uh, hostile work environment and bullying in, 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 a, in, a, in a place of education and picking on a minor because this kid was very humble and looking to be a Marine. So... Yeah. He's calling him out and says, why are you wearing that Marine Corps hoodie? I don't want you wearing that crap. You're going to be like your Uncle Louie? Now, his Uncle Louie is a Quezon survivor and a Vietnam vet and a, three-time, and a three-time Purple Heart recipient. So he was talking trash about him and Uncle Louie. So this, kid got, so this kid decided to, reti- to record this, right? Didn't know what to do. Took it to his mom. His mom's friend shared it, and it went viral. It went viral. It went viral like you had to go to the bathroom. Like by the time it was too late, you couldn't close the door. <laughs> Next, in within 24 hours, bro, that went 87,000 views. Wow. And I'm working here in the VA, and people in LinkedIn are inbox me. What's going on with this dude? What's going on? And I and I get it. And it's right down there. So Long Beach to Pico Rivera is like 20 miles, and I'm going like I I'm talking to the guys. They're OGs, they're veterans, you know, they're from East LA. Yeah. Hey man, this home guy, we're gonna we're gonna ace him. They, you know. We're on social media. I mean, you you don't have no corporate sponsors, so we don't have to bleep this all the time. So we're gonna, we're gonna fuck this dude up. That's what that, yeah. that's basically where we're gonna take him out. Yeah. So yeah. So I got called by about 10 veterans from Pico Rivera, and they sat me down and said, look, dude. We, we know you got a voice. We need to talk to this. So you know what I did? I said, I'm going to say, I'm going to go there on Monday. Why? And they were already planning a protest. They had 50 guys from a motorcycle gang for, 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 as veterans riding up there. And all, everybody's showing up to the school, right? The sheriffs are out there, everybody else. I pull up. The dad pulls up. I said, look, I'm going to walk in there. So the mayor... Mr. Gustavo uh, uh, Camacho, who's the mayor of Pico Rivera, is having an interview with CNN and uh, CBS. So I walk in there. I sit there and I go, hey, how you doing? I walk in with my VA badge. Hi, how can I help you, sir? So I work for the VA. I like to speak to the mayor. Well, hold on just a minute. Straight up. No joke. So I'm sitting here. I'm putting this Facebook live and and I'm putting it out there. I'm I'm in front of the city hall. 
I'm showing everybody that this is no bullshit. I'm out there showing it. I'm not making it up. I'm sitting in there, and I'm about to go live again. The secretary calls me. He calls me in the conference room. This happened less than five minutes. No joke. So I'm sitting there, and I'm not going to record it because I don't have his permission. So we're sitting there with his assistant, and we start talking. So I said, listen, I'm not going to emotionally vomit on you, but we have, a, we have a problem. And as a Latino and a professional Latino like you, why is it that this guy went sideways as he's talking about veterans when Pico Rivera is 70% veteran-driven and build a blue-collar area? Hello. You know? Hello. So he says, well, I rest assured we don't condone that. I said, look, dude, you need to help me help you in this situation. You and me are going to take a picture of this, let everybody know that we're going to make some kind of peace offering before the, before the media comes in. So we do that. I go outside. You know, we, I, he's, he cuts the interview just to sit down and talk to me, right? He goes back to talk to CNN and CBS. I go outside, talk to the dad. We start videotaping it live. We start putting it out there all for the veterans. Next thing you know, I'm bombarded for, for the next 96 hours. Hey, mm -hmm. Hiram, what's going on? What's going to happen with this guy? Make a long story short, we get a lawyer, right? We look at the a Patriot Act to see because he's been slandering and using the, the First Amendment right to his benefit that veterans like you and me have fought. You've been in Desert Shield, Desert Storm. You went to Somalia. You've seen some stuff, and a lot of guys paid the price, right? People don't understand that we've been able to pave the way for people to sit down there and enjoy their cup of coffee and not get, you know, bombarded yeah. like Syria is, you know? And yeah. That's not happening. So... We sat down with a lawyer. We started doing an assessment. So I stated to them, I said, look, dude, let's go social media live. Where the media can edit stuff, they can't edit it. Yeah. So we did it three. I did about five, six posts on that. And then we had two city council meetings. And I sat down with the, I called the, the, the mayor and I said, listen, we need to sit down again with your lawyer and our lawyer before it gets ugly. Because when it gets ugly, it's no turning back. So he never returned my call. So Mr. Salcedo was stage up to Pico Rivera, and uh, we had a town hall meeting. So he didn't go to the first one, but the second one we went. So I went to City Hall. He's in a little box like there in the in, like you go to um, jury duty, a little ice cream yeah. box. Four yeah. sheriff, four sheriffs comes out, right? Did, did, did he have a vest on? <laughs> no, he didn't have a vest on. Okay, okay. <laughs> the sheriff. <laughs> The LA Double County Sheriff said, because I already had a relationship. They say, how you doing? And say, because the, the city councilman said, hey, hire him, come inside. So I sit front row. I got box seats to this stuff. So Mr. Salcedo comes out, and I already know he's on Xanax because he's sitting there calm. I already know he's been prepped. He's sitting down there. And he's getting a tongue lashing for three hours, bro. Three hours of people venting and everything else. When it came up to me, I just said, listen. I'm not going to sit there and talk to you about tongue lash. And I said, you, I'm going to help you find another job one way or another. We're going to help you find another job because you, what you've done to this Latin community, and especially in Los Angeles, has desecrated the Latin community from a working class and veterans. You know, all these veterans are out here. Most of them have yeah. master's degree, bachelor's degree. They're entrepreneurs. Okay? And I, and I say it to you, it says, between you and me, this is my three minutes of fame. I will promise you that by the time the summer's out, you'll be gone. I didn't know that was going to happen that soon. You know, we followed up. And in, 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 in between that, you know, Washington, D.C. sends an invite to uh, what? family. Yeah, Washington, D.C. So General Kelly, General oh, why, Mathis. Why, yeah. why, would, why would Washington want this knucklehead? No, no, no. The, the family, the family, the family, uh, you know, the, the kid that recorded. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, got it. So we set them up. We raise money. They go vi visit uh, the Oval Office. They meet Vice President Pence, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, nice. General Kelly and everybody else. And, you know, to an endorsement. So in between that, everything was going on. So about two weeks later, we don't hear nothing. We find out he gets fired based on what we've been able to produce as far as violation of the constitution right hostile work environment bullying right racial mm -hmm. discrimination because of everybody and, and desecration of, of the veteran creed and pretty much that. so we've been able to leverage that and put pressure on city hall and the city council and the education to fire them because everybody uh, witnessed this so they all it was like this they witnessed a drive-by right he was the trigger man they didn't want to say nothing so they threw him underneath the bus 
So end the story. He's out. So. so, so you know, wrapping back to our core message in this broadcast, the every the everyday citizen, the everyday entrepreneur, regardless of how, how big you think your business is or not, you got the power of social media right here in your hands. Right, right. You got the power. You, everybody here has a voice. And we discussed earlier. You've got to be consistent with your voice. You mentioned to go from fifteen hundred to twenty thousand followers on LinkedIn. You post it every day. Mm-hmm. And then when you didn't post every day, people are wondering how come you're not, not posting because you're providing something of value. What, what, what's another thing? What, what happens to a guy out there, a veteran out there, or even an entrepreneur out there who may not be a veteran, but just happens to watch this on a replay because he followed my page says, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, you guys are cool because you guys are veterans. Um, how, how do we find a voice? How does one find their voice if they don't know where and how to find it? Look, just like us, man, we're both veterans, but we don't, don't we, we both don't know each other. This is like, wow, this is a wow moment because we've been able to talk live, right? Yeah, but yeah. we've been able to understand by reading what we post, by understanding where we can relate to it. Even though I have people that are not veterans, but they go, hey, Hiram, I, f- I, I feel you. I know what you're talking about. I get where, hey, I love following you. I understand. Well, I appreciate it. I'm very humbled by it. Hey, do you think we can do business? I said, what kind of business? This kind of business. You know what I tell them? Show me your business plan. Pretty much. God. Okay. I, 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 I don't do business with people that do not have any kind of substance or quality. I mean, if we're doing business, you and me, I already see what you bring to the table. Yeah. So, your business plan, people want to capitalize, monopolize, or jump on the bandwagon or want to be around somebody that's positive or has yeah. some form of leadership. Yeah. So, Which, which by the way, I, want to, I just want to publicly thank you. I already thank you for the, the referrals you've been sending me. So I thank, I thank you for that. So, And it's been all just been watching, observing what we're doing because you know, I Snapchat slash Instagram story, everything. So it's really not a moment in my day where <laughs> I'm not going to be a busy guy. You're a busy guy, dude. You make me hungry. You make me hungry when you post stuff. I get. Uh, I'm trying to cut weight, and I'm I'm getting back to working out. And you're over there posting lunch there. meetings, man. Lunch meetings. <laughs> well, well, you got a whole bunch of people out there, but you know the thing about it is, is let's get back to the real talk, bro. A lot of people that you notice in business that come up to you, they want to be a hero. You know, they're looking for permission to be successful. They don't need permission to be successful, bro. You didn't need permission to be successful. No. People are looking to be successful. No. And they're, and they're too busy on that phone, and that phone is the book of business. Why not yep. utilize it? Yep. Seriously. Yep. You know? So you tell it. me, brother. So if, you, if you're going to give me a, if you're gonna give everybody out there a formula or a secret sauce on how to start building their personal brand, um, consistency would be one of them. What would be, what would be another tip? What, what else would be another? A, a be honest success? with yourself, bro. Be honest yeah. with yourself. People buy buy you by what you bring to the pe- uh, by what you bring to the table. People read your post and they find holes in your story. You know, don't don't try to script it so good that it's professionally written. Speak from the heart. When people connect that, they understand that this guy's for real. When you're doing something on a viral aspect of it, so what you messed up. They like that because then you're saying this guy's not as perfect as he is. Yeah. So take his. Take constructive criticism to heart and say, okay, I suck. So I suck in grammar. So don't worry. I have spell check on the phone. I'll help <laughs> you out with that. So <laughs> we, we have enough big enough crayons for you there, Hiram. <laughs> well, look, man, the last thing I want to share with you, the biggest thing that started the movement is that we'll go back to Hurricane Maria, right? Back in Puerto Rico. Now, when Hurricane Maria was happening, I had veterans coming up to me. What are we going to do, Hiram? You, you know, you're, you're from the island and everything. I said, let's do something. Let's, let's collaborate. We were able to collaborate and, re, uh, you know, get about 300 special operations, special forces guys that, you know, are from the Caribbean and working with FEMA to get everything done. Let me tell you something, man. I spent 30 days, 30 to 60 days talking to the governor, state, secretary of state of Puerto Rico and the mayor and FEMA in Washington, D.C., and the supervisor in, uh, for FEMA in Puerto Rico. You know what they tell me? If you're volunteering yourself, no. We have people with, we have so much logistics and everything, and they're awarding contracts. So wh- what's happening is people can identify with you, Matt, because you come from a certain area. Hey, something happens, let's talk about it. Can you help me out? Do you, uh, can, you, can you relate to that? So what happens is therapeutic for people to understand that. That's another form of social media. You have your haters and you have your praises, you know? 
they can hate you all you want, but you're successful. You know, what yep. can you do? Yeah. So that's it's, how, that's. Go ahead. Speaking of the haters, you know, you know, you, you can't expect to put yourself out there and not get haters. Oh, day, bro. I, I, oh. I, I, I think that's what people are so afraid of, too. So, you know, they're afraid of what other people think about them, their comments, uh, the, of the 10 good yeah. things that can come their way. They're afraid of that one person that wants to be negative. They know who they are, right? Hey, just kiss them goodbye, bro. You know why? <laughs> by, by you, it's like this. You hating me tells me that I'm doing something right. If it's if it's touching you, that means you you're not cool with it. You're not secure with yourself, right? Why should I hate on somebody that's successful like you? It should motivate me because you know we're all born poor. That's our fault, not mm -hmm. our fault. When you die, if you're broke, it's your fault, right? Correct. That's yes, right. I like that. We we we're born poor. That's not our fault. But if we die poor, that is our fault. Boom. Right. Uh, you know, and, and, and just like you, my, my mantra for business in the nonprofit is just, just like you. No family left behind. For me, no veteran left behind. So as us veterans, there's plenty of success because, look, man, business, everybody wants to hoard something. But at the same time, what we've been talking about, leaving the legacy. Yeah. What did Matt do for me? How, yeah. much that my, how, much of a, how much of a price can I put on Matt's relationship? Can I trade it in for a blue book value? You can't. Mm. It's priceless. You know, yep. so it's priceless, but it does appreciate. <laughs> it does go it, up in value. It goes, yeah. it goes up in value depending on how you do something. But it depreciates when you start going sideways on doing something that uh, that really drops down the stock. You know, take uh, Mark, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook; his thing's going down fast. So yeah, yeah. By the way, I want so, to give a quick shout out for those of you guys who are tuning in right now. Maurice Williams, what's going on, Devil Dog? He and I were in the Marine Corps together. Yeah, he's got a cigar business out in the West called called. Uh, um, uh, uh, Lady Barrel, uh, Maurice. I, 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 bro, uh, uh, put your put your um, put your company name in the in the comment section. But he's got he does cigars dipped in cognac or whiskey uh, or scotch. Oh my! <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, uh, I think Chad Johnson Ocho Cinco is his business partner. Uh, really? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Oh, man. So look, look, this is what I would suggest. Two things, man, is, is that when we develop this relationship, as everybody's seen live, it's going to flourish in a lot of ways because we're both minorities. We're both successful in our own way. Right. In a lot of ways. Right. We both love Puerto Rican, Cuban food, hey, Filipino bro. food. Hey, well, I, man, you come over here to Carson Surreal. That's the capital of the Philippines out here, bro. So, <laughs> uh, so in Chicago, you know, you got Humble Park. So there's a lot of stuff. That that's right. Out here. So, yeah. uh, so for myself, you know, working, I used to work in the Latin entertainment. Guy and Lady Barrel. Yep. No, well, we'll get it. So, yep. so for us, man, I, you know, I want people to understand that simple people, simple minded things can be very successful and we're not simple minded. We just keep it very simple because people feel comfortable with it. We're more real with it. When you're becoming too more, too much articulate or, or, or very more about me. People shun away from me. I said, look, I'll talk to you later. I'm done with you. I said, I ain't going to talk to this guy. or I don't want to even follow yeah. this guy. You know, yeah. and, and, and that brotherhood that we bring together yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaks values. So people don't understand unless you're in the mix, you know? Yeah. So it's, so. it's a great fraternity. Even though we didn't go to college <laughs> the traditional way, the Marine Corps Veteran Brotherhood is one of the greatest brothers. It's, it's great because my, my children see it. When we go out to a restaurant, whatever, and and they see a Marine Corps logo on the car or they see it on, on, on the grunt style T-shirt or something like that. And they're like, Poppy, look, that's that's a veteran. And I go up to him. And I said, uh, you know, hey, uh, what's going on, vet? What branch of service are you in? Oh, Army or Marine Corps. Hey, thank you for your service, brother. And, and they see that connection amongst veterans. And my twins are very impressionable. They, they're seeing that stuff. Like, wow, what, what a brand that the military community has that uh, they can shake hands like that. They can be strangers, but because a veteran – Bond connect, connects them. They're automatic brothers and sisters. Man, them. let let me tell you something. It's been, yeah, thirty seven years since I was a hat in the, in, in the drill field. I got guys right. in LinkedIn that okay, I remember you and my drill instructor. Blah, no. blah blah blah. I'm serious. I got about ten guys, and they say, "Hey, thank you, man. You've been able to. You don't change." I said, "Well, I'm getting older, so I don't really care." But yeah. see, the people don't understand when, when you're in a position of leadership or, or molding, or and let's say from from from, from 
my success as a drill instructor for three years and taking guys and molding them and, and, and building that relationship, that's a lifetime commitment. Yeah. So pretty much. So people understand that. So when, you, when you're out there in the mix in the sandbox and you're on Somalia or anything else or in Desert yeah. Shield, people understand, like, bro, you don't know what we've been through. You don't understand the bond. It's like something goes down, everything turns, you know, like German Shepherd. Well, it's time to attack canine uh, and everything else. <laughs> well, we'll talk about it later, but let's get done with the mix, you know? Right. So yeah. that's pretty much it. But uh, I'm waiting for you to come out here to California so I can take you to a couple of salsa clubs out there. Is that uh, right? Two, yeah. I, two, my two, my, yeah. Two of my friends are the top promoters in, in Los Angeles. So, Oh, bro. Uh, we just found yeah. we just found out today. We just found out today this morning that uh, um, PHP agency, our agency, our CEO Patrick Ben David is taking us to Havana, Cuba. We just found out this morning. He's taking us there uh, next Enjoy. February. Enjoy, yeah. Enjoy, enjoy, because you're gonna have to practice because yeah, that's going in there. Well, I, um, I got I, I got to learn the uh, the Cuban style salsa step because it's different. Why than you just... <laughs> Look, bro. Let's put it this Why you just do the mat style? That's how. Yeah, you do the mat style. They, you know, people say, "So how you do that, Matt?" I said, "Well, I just do it this way." Then they just do it this way. In the 25 years of working in the Latin t- entertainment business, and and I'll tell you one thing, my uh, when Tino Puente was around, I was his freaking bodyguard for two years. Really? That was like being yeah. That was like being the Pope for a while. Oh <laughs> Tito, oh Tito. It was more stressful putting the women away. But the thing about it is I've learned that and I appreciate my music and it's getting back to being authentic with my with my heritage being Puerto Rican. As a professional Puerto Rican, I value where I come from. That's where my story begins. And it's disheartening that, you know, when we see a situation like Puerto Rico and it's a mass exodus is going to Puerto Rico from Puerto Rico, going to the to the mainland and people are striving. They're looking for a sense of connectability. This is where you come in, because in your business, a lot of minorities come in. Really, and nobody's passing judgment because everybody's hungry. Everybody's hungry. I say, I got game. Well, you got game. I'm gonna call you out because I'm gonna do this. You know, I'm gonna do it for me. So the peer pressure is on in. I'm sure you see that. I've seen the uh, the pregame dances. I said, I, I, I feel right, like I'm right. gonna... pregame, baby. <laughs> I'm watching that for a minute. I'm going like, you know, are they gonna break dance? Or I'm gonna put some bets on people. So I like it. I mean, but what? What draws to me is that you keep it real in business, and business should be that way. It should be fun. It shouldn't be so – it's structured to the point to be able to train. But it should be fun because people should be able to identify and say, man, I just did business with this dude, man. What do you think? And you give him a – roger that, man. You're, you're good, man. So right. people love that, man. So you're retaining a lot of people, and you're growing. So mm-hmm. something's going right. So both of us are doing successful things, you know? I mean – I love yes. your office, dude. I feel like I want to play football in there, man. You know, it's, 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 <laughs> it is it is pretty big, man. It's pretty big, right? But but hey, the last thing I want to share with you is this: Look, bro, if you really want to talk about success with the veterans, then let's do it. Let's get together, get yep. a group of veterans. Tell them yep. from your side. I work in the VA. I've seen it. You know, I'm an entrepreneur from a nonprofit. Pr- perspective you're an entrepreneur from a money perspective it works the same way you know yeah. so yeah. wouldn't it be successful for everybody that's watching that that makes sense it says there's enough success for everybody bro who's yeah, yeah, yeah. hating then who's hating on who when you die you can't take it with you all they're yeah. going to remember is that dash in between when you were born and then where you were dead you know so right they, you're the biggest thing that people can understand is that your memories last for a lifetime so that's it man well Hiram I appreciate you devil dog drill instructor <laughs> San Diego I freaking love it molding marines creating marines yeah <laughs> nah man look I appreciate you bro seriously sometimes you get out sometimes you have to get out of California to really appreciate us oh, yep somebody was calling me uh yeah. Oh, good. I, I appreciate I appreciate you because I, you got to get out of California because sometimes we feel like the Kardashians. We're trying to brand ourselves and we're not being successful. You know, and yeah. people are getting caught up with the hype, but you're keeping it real, man. I, I really do. I value you. I appreciate you. You serve things, and you know, yeah. people are gonna see more about you. And like I said, I've got people that I have veterans that are looking for help. 
they're coming to you. You already got the one that's in Texas. So that's right. That's right. I, and, I, and I appreciate that. It's been awesome. By the way, I talked to David Diaz too as well. David Diaz, we talked about yesterday. So, yeah. yeah. So, so let's do this, man. Like everybody else, if they want to know more about veteran transition or how we became successful or what is it that makes us tick, you know, if they want to talk to us or they want me back, hey, I'd be more than happy. It's up to them. It's up to you of what they want to do from a veteran community. I want to be able to stay connected to you and keep it very real because yeah. nothing's, uh, you know, there's no hidden sauce in this stuff. I'm just keeping yeah. real on that. Side. So cool. All right. So Puerto Rican, Rican food. Yeah. Puerto Rican food, bro. Ooh. <laughs> hey. Uh, arroz con gandules and some uh, tostones con ajo. Well, let me put it to you this way. Uh, I know you have uh, uh, the Puerto Rican festival in, in, in Chicago. I, you know, I got to be careful. I got to bring a vest out there because you do. I do. Uh, I do. But we have one out here in Los Angeles and one in San Diego. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's going to be happening the Fourth of July. Uh, no, uh, Father's Day weekend that be July, uh, June nineteenth, and there's the other one in San Diego. So there's going to be a lot of entertainment. So you let me know what's going on. Okay, we hook up, and All if right. everybody, if you want to put it live on there, you can show it to them. So of course, people be with. of course. <laughs> Maybe we get a bunch of veterans <laughs> one of these things together. Man, we have fun together, man, and. Uh, we grab a beer. We grab, we grab a beer together as brothers and sisters. But, well, uh, why do 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 this, man? I mean, it, it's really you got it, you know you're driving on this. You know, yeah. we got a lot of things going on. I'm sure that people can see that if they really want it. Let the people that's watching it right now speak to it and say how they feel. It. Get some feedback. I yeah. mean, video doesn't lie, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, all right. So, well, very good for those of you uh, watching us right now. Thank you for tuning in. I will be tomorrow at the Murder Mediocrity Summit and Experience at the Lakewood Chicago. Yeah, by oh, the yeah, way, you got a video tag. Yeah, we, we yeah. Got, I got to that. Yeah, I, I think I forgot to even promote it, but listen. No, in, you in didn't. Minutes, you know you didn't. You did. Yeah, I, I did it. Yeah. In the next 10 minutes, in the next 10 minutes, if you guys are watching this, for those of you who are watching this right now, you watch it till the very end. The next 10 minutes, if you share this video, talk about social media, talk about uh, uh, veterans uniting together about creating a community, about finding your voice, about being you, you share this video. I've got two tickets for anybody that's in Chicago or flying into Chicago. If you want to attend the Murder Mediocrity event tomorrow at the Lakewood Chicago, hosted by Chicago radio host, Lonel Harris, um, I have two tickets for you guys. So if you share this video in the next 10 minutes, Brandon here is going to count all the shares just like we did yesterday. By the way, we have a winner from last Tuesday, right? So last Tuesday, Rosie Laguna oh, shared 33 times. Who's Brandon? Brandon's right here, man. Let me see yeah, this guy. Yeah, there he is. He's, yeah. uh, oh, I've seen this guy. What's that, man? I said, I'm half Puerto Rican, too, and we don't play football. We play baseball. <laughs> baseball. Hey, bro. So you're good. So you're not half. You're, you're Rican. There's no such thing as half. You got Rican <laughs> blood. So, so that's how it is. But uh, hey, pleasure meeting you, man. So uh, we got enough gondolas to, and Goya products to share with everybody. So I, <laughs> I have stock on that, bro. So that's good. <laughs> you got some Cafe, Bust uh, Cafe Bustelo. Uh, ready so, look, so the yeah. last thing, bro, the last thing, I, look, just let people know this. Uh, I'm vice president of Valor for Veterans, and we're pretty much working for, for throughout the United States. And I'm going to be, uh, there's another uh, uh, nonprofit group called Rescue. And I'm, a, I'm the vice president of social media on that. So those two, so, those two nonprofits, we're working for veterans, and we want to be able to network with you when it comes to financial stability to be able to, to, to give that, you know, nice. moment, momentum to you because they can relate. They, the veteran community, veterans who are married into a family that have no sense of direction and they need some financial direction, why not give it to you, bro? Why not? You know? It's awesome, brother. I, I appreciate that, man. And we have offices coast to coast. That we're just not limited to Chicago. We're just not limited to California. We've got uh, offices from coast to coast. Um, they can help people better manage their, fi their finances and increase their finances and take this step and journey into entrepreneurship, just like I have and just like Hiram has too as well. So appreciate you, brother. All right, brother. Peace out. Thank you very much. All right. All right. No, All we'll right. talk later. later you man. got it. And again, for those of you sharing this video in the next 10 minutes, we'll give you another 10 minutes to share this video to see who's going to win two tickets to tomorrow's Murder, Mediocrity, Summit, and Experience uh, uh, hosted by uh, Chicago radio host, Lonel Harris. I'm one of the speakers. 
Uh, and I'm going to be talking about working money and my topic, how to create wealth in 2018. Put more money in your pocket, right? We're going to start creating this generational wealth conversation. So we'll keep it posted. Right. Yeah, keep it posted, keep posted, bro. You got it, bro. All right, bro. All right, cool. ladies. Peace. All right. And until we meet again, thanks for tuning in. Until we meet again, guys, thanks for tuning in. Every Friday, 1 to 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, I am here on Red Friday. Red, remember, everyone deployed is my way of giving back to the veteran community for all of our veterans uh, that are here uh, uh, transitioning into entrepreneurship and also keep in mind in prayer those who are deployed overseas fighting for our freedom and fighting for our rights here in the United States of America. That being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following Money Smart Guy here on the Money Smart Show. I'll see you guys next Wednesday live, but Sunday we have a vlog coming up. Episode which one? 32. Episode 32 coming up of Living Money Smart this Sunday morning, so make sure you tune into that. Cool? Thanks for tuning in, guys. Till we meet again. Continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Have a great weekend. God bless you guys.